Financial Accounting Part 5, Accruals and Deferrals. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our email address and our phone number. You'll see our website later. This information was taken from McGraw-Hill Irwin from one of their online sites with a uh, textbook on accounting. I want to talk about accrual entries, which are something that we do at the end of a period in accounting. And there's a few things you should know about them. First, that they affect more than one accounting period. And we're going to see an example between two months, September and October, in just a minute. So they affect more than one period. And the other thing is that they each journal entry, each debit and credit entry affects one revenue and expense account and one balance sheet account, an asset or liability. So you've got to have a revenue and expense, an income statement account, and a balance sheet account to have an accrual entry. Let's go to PowerPoint and show you an extensive example on accrual accounting. One thing that I put at the top here is the first thought whenever you are figuring out a debit and credit journal entry, an accounting entry is, did anything happen to cash? Because what you'll find is, is that more than half of your entries will affect cash in some way. So if you're stuck, start off by thinking, did anything happen to cash? So what we have here is the Levi Jeans Company. We have September an income statement with revenue and expense and then we have October with a income statement revenue and expense and I've also put two different headings here one is cash basis and one is accrual basis you can think of cash basis as your checkbook you write a check you count it as an expense you make a deposit you count that as revenue and you don't really worry about when you sold the item when the expense actually hits you just think about your checkbook so with cash basis I'm gonna type under here checkbook and let's put that in bold so what I have is the transactions on the right hand side of the screen and I have the journal entries on the other side of the screen so on September 5th we sell a pair of jeans for cash on a cash basis, your checkbook, you make a deposit, we count that as revenue, same as the accrual basis, and our accrual journal entry is increase cash debit, increase revenue by crediting. On September 9th, the client prepays for a gene order. So they make a payment and they're going to get the genes, the product or service, later. On a cash basis, we made a deposit, so we count it as revenue. But on an accrual basis, we don't. Our, debt, our journal entry for an accrual is we increase cash, but we don't count it as revenue or a sale yet. We count it as unearned revenue. And I have a number two by it because at the bottom of the page, we talk about the four types of adjustments that you make in accrual accounting. And number two talks about converting a liability to revenue and we talk about cash collections in advance. The reason it's a liability is is that if you don't deliver those genes you're going to owe the client that money back. So it's a credit, it's a liability and I'm going to type liability here because that money has not been earned yet. You will have to pay that money back if you didn't deliver the genes. So accrual accounting says we call it a liability. On September 12th we sell a pair of jeans and we bill a client which means we don't get paid yet. So on a cash basis no cash came in, the checkbook no change. But on an accrual basis because we've actually delivered the product or service we count that as revenue. So our accrual journal entry is increase receivable, increase revenue. So those are our revenue entries in September. Let's go down to our September expenses. We prepay three months of insurance. If you pay your car insurance, you'll always notice that you're paying in advance. You're paying for coverage that will happen after you write the check. 
So on a cash basis, our expense goes down. We recognize an expense cause. We wrote a check. But on an accrual basis, we don't. And we have a number one here because this is the number one type of adjustment, which is converting an asset to an expense. An insurance expense. The reason it's a prepaid asset is, is because that is money we don't have to pay later on. We've already paid the expense, therefore that has value to us. It's an asset. So we have prepaid insurance debit, it's an asset. We credit cash. You'll notice that the debit is not an expense. At the end of the month, September 30th, we recognize one month of expense. 30 days has gone by one month. So we, on the accrual basis, we're in the accrual column, we expense one month or one third of the $3,000, $1,000, and now we record a debit of an insurance expense and we reduce the prepaid insurance account. Later on, you're, we're going to go over the T accounts and we're going to talk about how the debits and credits work for each type of account, and we'll see that later. Another thing that happens in late September is, at the end of the month, we accrue September payroll that's going to be paid in the next month. If you've ever had a job where you're paid every two weeks instead of the 15th and the 30th of the month, your business has had to accrue payroll, which means when they get to the end of a month, and you've earned pay that has not been paid yet, they have to recognize that as an expense in September. So there's no cash impact. We're not writing the payroll check. But on the accrual basis, we're recognizing expense for 4000 We have expense 4000 debit, and we have a payable 4000 credit. The last thing that's happening is, in late September, is, is that we, and this is actually a revenue, it, should, it belongs at to, on the top, so I'm going to write revenue here, just so you know, is that we have some interest that we've earned on an investment of some type. Let me sit down the microphone. So it's some interest that we've earned on some type of investment. And as time passes, we have revenue, we have earnings. So on the, in the accrual column, we're going to recognize an increase of $500. We have a receivable because we're not getting paid the interest until next month, but we do record the revenue. Accrued interest is a receivable account is the heading I have here. So what we've seen so far is the September income statement. We've looked at the cash basis and the accrual basis. We've noticed the difference between cash and accrual. And we've also posted journal entries. That's as far as we're getting on part five. We'll continue the discussion on part six on YouTube. Our YouTube channel, Ken Boyd STL, all one word. You'll find a complete list of videos on the website, stltest.net, where we do live tutoring and chat sessions, both one-on-one -on -one and in groups. That's the end of this presentation, and we'll see you next time.